Everyone apparently in the industry knew that the broadcasters, Harry Carey and Milo Hamilton, had a major beef with each other. Sports. Give Murph a call at 312-644-6767. That's 312-644-6767. And tell him what's beefing you in the world of sports. What's Your Beef is brought to you by Brown's Chicken Sandwiches and Catering. Ah, it tastes better. Brown's Beefs and Lunchtime. Let's get to the phones. Glad I'm back in town. Glad you're along now. Hey. 312-644-6767. What's your beef? Get you in, get you out. And as always, as always, the best beefs from you win the best beefs in Chicago. Browns, the Italian beef sandwich. It's the best you've ever had. And the Italian sausage, the best you've ever had. 50 Browns locations, lunchtime right now. Put them together. Call it a combo. The favorite of Browns president, Frank Portillo. <laughs> All right, so many beefs. Let's get to the beef lines. He was the first fastest dialer. It's Lee in Streamwood. Hello, Lee. Murph, it's so good to hear you again. Oh, I really missed you. Thank you, Lee. Lawrence did a great job. I'm glad to be back. I didn't want to stay away too long. He was settling in, doing a great job. All right, Lee, what's your beef? Here's my beef. About a week or so ago, Cowley in the Sun Times had a little thing in his in his column about how Nick Twister is the guy that the Sox are kind of going to be putting in the center field spot, penciling in. Yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, if that's the case, they're in trouble. Right. It's going to be like Rod McCovick revisited. Huh. What they really want to do uh-huh. is they want to have a guy like Owens in center field. Sure. So we got a sports personality. I'm not going to mention who picking up on a Cowley idea, talking about how Twister is going to be the Sox center fielder. That is a ridiculous thought. Well, that's not even smart. Well, well, uh, there's a number. There's a number of problems there. Number one, Swisher's not a center fielder. Number two, that means that you're. Uh, if you did put him in center, uh, then Ozzy has to figure out who's in left field, and uh, that would be either uh, 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 Quentin, the guy they picked up from the Diamondbacks, or this Alexei R- Ramirez. Neither of those guys you don't want to be coming north. The best lineup, and you just heard John DeWan, the uh, base stealing, the bunting. Jerry Owens has to be, in my opinion, the Sox opening day center fielder, or it's a major disappointment in my eyes, Lee, to a Kenny, I, Kenny and Ozzy. I totally agree with you, and you know, being a baseball guy myself, I see the, the, the efficacy of having a guy like like Owens in center. You need a guy like Owens. You don't need a guy like Swisher. Well, like I say, you can't I, have a guy butchering the ball in center field. you got to go get the ball. In fact, I, I will say it's the key to the White Sox season. Sure, there's a, 24 other keys, don't get me wrong, but the key is if Jerry Owens can steal you know, 30, 40, 50, I know he said 65, if he can lay down some bunts for hits, and then you know what? Patrol out there. Hey, I like your angle. Go visit my friends at Brown's. It tastes better, Lee. Hey. Hey. Got a little brick house in me today. Lee's going to Brown's. Hey, the great thing about Brown's, you, you know they have the, the wonderful, the golden uh, chicken. And you bring that home. Hey, honey, snowing out, bad day, weather. Hey, I'm bringing dinner home from Brown's. You're stopping for lunch right now. The beef's the Italian sausage, my favorite, Maxwell Street Polish. Oh, man, yellow mustard, grilled onions. You can't even find Maxwell Street anymore. Let's go to Jason from Kenosha's on What's Your Beef. Hello, uh, is that Jason? Hey, hey, how you doing, buddy? First-time beefer. Hey, I love my first-time beefers. Jason, what's your beef? My beef is with the Blackhawks organization. Hmm. Now, I thought everybody was happy with John McDonough, <laughs> Jay Blunk, and the new organization. Oh, John McDonough is doing a great job, but in particular, Dale Talon. You know, I mean, of all the guys I thought would not be traded, it would be Tuomo Rutu. When, when, he, when he first played on the first line with Hallett and Lang, yeah, he wasn't scoring goals because he was too busy going to the corners and getting the puck for those guys because they don't want to hit anybody. They don't want to go in the corners. They don't want to get their hands dirty. It, it, no wonder he's not scoring any goals. Well, you, you know, it, you some, do all the work for him. Someone over there, I always had the feeling they didn't like Ruto. I don't know what they didn't like about him. It's just my perception from reading, watching the games on TV, listening to him here on the score. There's always a lot of money involved. Maybe Talon wanted to launch Ruto for all we know. Know, a long time ago, but maybe Mr. Wirtz wouldn't let the money go. I haven't looked into how the money is uh, here. I bet the Blackhawks had to eat some of the dough. So right now, I got to figure that Dale Talon was happy to get rid of him, though, Jason. Do you know what? You know what? 
you know, there's, there's, there's probably some politics going on that I'm not aware of for sure. But, you know, I mean, he played hockey like the games both he played. He played it hard all the time, 100%, no matter what. Well, you know what? You all, know? all I know is that I have a feeling that Savard, Talon, and up the ranks to John McDonough, they looked at this long and hard. I'm going to stick with the guys right now. But a great, great beef. Jason, next time you call, you'll be a second-time beefer, okay, buddy? You got it, Ah, thank you. Talk a little Blackhawks. All right, let's catch up on a few things. I'm going to be back in just a few moments. We have George's update, second round of phone calls. Everyone on hold. What's your beef? Lunch, Browns, beefs, beefs, Browns, lunch, sports radio, 670. Hey, to email the Mike Murphy Show, that'd be me, log on to 670thescore.com. Click on the personalities page and click my head. A lot of you want to always click my head. Now you can do it. Back after this, this hour of the scores broadcast day brought to you by Woodfield Nissan. Donovan, I've got your mom on the line and she's got a major beef. Oh, I'm getting hungry just thinking about lunch time at Browns. It tastes better. An Italian beef, an Italian sausage. Also, put them together, call it a combo. Oh, there's super fan Dan. Loves the meatball sandwich. Four big meatballs. Bloop up. Another meatball just fell on Danny's tie with the marinara sauce. Oh, man. Let's go back to the phones. What's your beef? They're saying go to line three. Joel from Rochelle has an interesting beef, I do believe. Hello, Joel. Hi, Murph. Glad to uh, you're back. I've got Thank several, you. several things about the officiating. And officiating. The game, but, a fi- and the rules. A beef number about one, the rules. I love it. Number one, uh, the games take too long the last ten minutes. You're talking about NBA? I'm talking about the college game. College and, basketball. All right. Yeah, back in the 1950s, oh, yeah. Yeah, in the, when there were four minutes to go in the game, oh, you were in the one and one. No TV. If you made a foul, you yeah. got the chance to take the ball out of bounds a second time. Really? So, yes. Penal- so, in other words, it was a deterrent to foul late That's in the game. Right. I like it. I like in, it. In, in fact, Give me another one. Give me another one, Joel. Okay. Another one is there's not one official out there yeah. that's got enough guts to call an intentional foul in the last two minutes of the game. Well, that's not a rule. That's just a, a, a poor a rule, uh, referee. That, what I'm saying is they don't have the guts to call All right. You All right. Have to elbow a guy, yeah. uh, hit so a guy what are you going to do? How are you going to change that? If they're not going to blow the whistle, how are you going to make them blow the whistle? What's your next rule change? Okay, the next thing yeah. is forget the five second count. Okay. There's a cl- yeah. There's a clock yeah. for 35 seconds. All Women right. don't have the five seconds. And all I see these officials giving yeah. a safe sign. There oh. is no safe sign. There's no the safe ball. sign in basketball. Thank you very much. There's no crying in baseball. Stroller from Wheeling. Hello, Stroller. Hey, Murph. Uh, welcome back. <laughs> Thank it, you it, very it, much. It, Browns it, taste it, better. It, yeah. There is there is crying in baseball, and there will be on the south side if anybody. Oh uh, boy, my, my here beef, we go. There no, we no, go. No, no. Hey, hey, my <laughs> beef my beef goes out to yeah. Kenny. All right. And anybody else that wants to promote that fallacy that we have a center fielder. Uh, uh, Swisher. Uh, the, new, the, the new gentleman Owens. is not a center fielder, right. no way. Well, and, you know, uh, hold on, hold on. Owens had a nice final six weeks. I know it don't mean nothing. Uh, there, I, no, 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 I know that. But all I'm saying is you do not know if the six weeks uh, that uh, Owens had uh, played good ball at the end, you don't know if that's what he's going to do April, May, June, July, August. All I'm saying is he did not. Felix P.A. stunk up the joint. The last six weeks, this kid at least played some ball. So we'll find out. Go ahead, though. Continue. Well, I'll, I'll counter that by saying, listen, I'd rather have pie because he can get to the ball, and he's got an arm. Oh, who it's- wouldn't want to have pie? He's got a rocket for an arm. Let's go to, uh, maybe I took too many days off, huh? The silliest thing I've ever heard in my life. Well, never too many days. Hey, Robert's in Itasca. Hey, how you doing? Fine, Robert, what's your beef? My beef is with my Chicago Bullies on clock management. Clock management. Now, last night's game, they were within three or four. Yes. It's, uh, it, last night's game was a perfect example. I just remember the Bulls of old with Jackson and Jordan would always take advantage of the two for one. Good old days. They, yeah, the good old days. It was yeah, you minutes, got you know? you know you got the uh, ball with uh, you know like forty uh, with like fifty. So you want to shoot before forty eight, so you know you're going to get it back, or exactly. or shoot. Uh, I'm sorry, shoot like with twenty eight seconds, then you're going to get it back with five seconds. 
Exactly. Now, last night, after the end of the first half, mm-hmm. I believe we had an opportunity yeah. there, but it, it got pissed away and I gave up the three point shot. The three. They yeah, gave exactly. up the three point shot. That's hey! Amazing. You're a winner. Go to Browns. I like your angle, Robert. Hang on, buddy. Go visit my friends at Browns. It tastes better. Lunch at Browns, dinner at Browns, and. When's the last time Murph told you about the jumbo? This is unbelievable. But they are now doing it. Browns, 50 locations around Chicago. Hey, there's one up ahead on the left. Turn in right now. Jumbo buffalo wings. Bigger wings, bigger taste, five great flavors. If you like wings, you'll love Browns jumbo buffalo wings. Bigger, meatier, tastier. Ready? They're flying off the shelves. (laughs) Sorry. At Browns. Let's bring up next, uh, by the way, Robert from my task at line four. He's going to Browns. Fellas, next is uh, car phone. Chris is on the score. Hey, Chris. Hey, Murph. What's going on? No. My beef what's is your about, beef? Uh, Nick Swisher and center fielder. I seem to recall listening to the Murph show a yeah. couple months ago yeah. after the acquisition of Nick Swisher. Yeah. And, and you brought on John DeWan, and yeah. he compared Swisher's center field play to that of Aaron Rowan and that of Torrey Hunter. And, and John DeWan determined that um, Nick Swisher was just as good or better a center field player than Aaron Rowan, who is beloved by so many Chicago fans. Yes, he so, did. Yes, you're exactly right with their fielding. Um, methodology he did say that let me as i spin through hold on hold that thought i want to check here i got my bill james handbook swisher last year six, 60 games in center field for the a's and 57 games in right field and 44 games at first base well you can rule out first uh Kenurka, you can rule out right uh, germain die center field i still think that in the long run you're a better team if owens can do what you need him to do because you need that leadoff hitter that's just me though and but you're right swisher is not the bust out stumble bum that maybe we uh, like to portray him as right well, that's what, that's what I'm saying, and I just don't think that guys should be uh, so uh-huh. down on him yet until you let him play a few. I don't think that he's going to be anything like a Rob McCoviak. No. Uh, that, that, the caller who said that earlier was tongue-in-cheek, I know, and uh, you're right. No one could do in center what Chicago and Southside guy Rob McCoviak uh, did. Got good comment. Hey, Chris, tell you what, I like your angle, buddy. You're going to go to Browns. Hang on. Hey. How about my guy Vuk? Ah, oh, been on vacation. I haven't thought about Vuk for all your insurance needs. Jeff Vukovic, Murph's Nationwide Insurance Agent of the Year. Vuk, 29 years solid family guy, sports guy, Park Ridge. Vuk is on your side. Dan from beautiful Hinsdale on the, out by my old stomping grounds of LaGrange. Hello, Dan. Hey, Murph, how you doing? Fine, buddy. What's your beef? You know, I'm just, it just makes me sick as far as uh, baseball fans' apathy towards their teams acquiring these guys who have uh, admitted and have been suspected of, uh, you know, taking HGH and steroids. I mean, it just seems to be the attitude, so what? If this guy can help us win, I don't care if he's been a cheater. I'll do anything. It just, you know, there's no integrity anymore. It just makes me sick. Well, Dan, you raise a, a great point and the dilemma of every general manager. Now, what you and I do not know, Dan, I think you'll agree with me, we don't know what percentage of baseball players have been juiced up. Now, it could be 50%. It could be 75%. Dan, let me ask you this. Let's just say, for argument's sake, because you raise a valid point. Yeah. Dan, let's just say 99% of baseball players have been juiced up in the past. you got to still have 25 players. You know, you got to, what are you going to do if there was 99%? What are you going to do then? Well, Murph, it, it, you can only act on the ones you know for sure. And that, you know, obviously if 99% have done it, then, you know. Then you, you got to play them. Yeah, but let's, let's know right. then that 99% have done it. Let's have tests from now on. So well, that the, no, the other problem is, you know, uh, a lot of these players slipped through the cracks, the Latin guys, because it was mostly if you, didn't, if you played for the Mets or the uh, uh, Yankees or the Oakland A's or San Francisco. Those were the main teams that were all uh, caught up in, in the federal investigations. But, Dan, I won't argue with you it bothers me too i just don't know what the answer is but i'm glad you got through phone again all right dan okay thanks murph thank you buddy i appreciate it look at the beef lines can we can we come back to a final couple of beefs is that all right there steve all right steve goffman says go ahead murph john and rolling meadows mad trucker oh, i tell you you take vacation you come back it's 12 45 i gotta take a little break myself gotta get my energy back 
some coffee. Got any of that Red Bull back there, Steve Goffman? No? I took care of it all. I bet you did. Steroid-free host here from noon to two. HGH free also. Back in a flash. Sports Radio 670 is the score. Murph, driven you by Chevy. Drive Chicago.com. I want to talk to you. Hey, you got some beefs. Oh, an extended. What's your beef from Browns? It tastes better. Let's get back to the phones. Murph, great to be back after a vacation. Glad you're with me today. This hour of the score's busy broadcast day being brought to you by Woodfield Nissan. Lunch and Browns and beefs. Mm-mm. John from Rolling Meadows. Hello, John. Hey, Murph, how are you? How was your vacation? Uh, wonderful. Always seems too short, and then sometimes you can't wait to get back. You know what I mean? Did you make it to Arizona? Well, you know what? I went where it was warm this time. I went down to actually, not that anyone cares, I visited a few high school buddies of mine down in uh, Florida and uh, stayed over there at uh, Port St. Lucie a few days with my buddy nice Keith. Area. And over at the Clearwater on the other side, took Route 60 across the state of Zeta crazy uh, little uh, four-lane road <laughs> to Clearwater, Florida, my buddy uh, Al uh, Shostokas. So uh, thanks for asking. No one cares, but uh, except for you and uh, Dana cool. probably was glad that I was gone. John, what's your beef? You know, uh, I was watching the, the Bulls game last night, and uh, whatever identity they did have uh, went out the window with the trade to Cleveland. They have no low-post players now. Uh, Smith and Big Ben are gone, and and from what I from what I've seen, I think the Bulls' <laughs> offensive scheme fits the Western Conference more better than the East because it, they play very little defense. And they're, if, you're, if they're not hitting from the outside, they get one shot and that's it. I mean, they got no rebounding. The people coming off the bench, you know, can't give them much. You know, Ben Gordon does what he can, and and well, it, John, it, look, John, you know, I see. I I'm sort of on the other side of the coin. I think to get rid of, and uh, it happened a week ago, so I'm, it's been digested here on the score. And Lawrence did a great job sitting in, but just to get rid of Ben Wallace because he didn't want to play. Doesn't matter well, what he yeah, doesn't matter what he continues that, yeah. to do now. He didn't want to be here. Joe no. Joe Smith and Ben Wallace were the two guys that were laughing, and I tip my hat. This is the last we'll talk about it because it was a week ago, to John Paxson, because those two guys, when they were down by 30 points about four weeks ago, were, were laughing, laughing on the bench. bench. Yeah, it was disgusting, around. and it was Joe but Smith you know, and Ben Wolf. Well, and I'll tell you something else. Something. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Okay. You might disagree, but there, there's going to be minutes now. You're going to find out if Tyrus Thomas can play or not. I like there's, him. There's minutes now for Joe Keem Noah. You're going to yeah. find out if he can play or not. Uh, Pax also has a log jam. He's got about five guys at the two guard positions. He can, he's got Deng also. At the, he's, got, uh, he's got about three guys at each position. So let's wait and see. Now that the trading deadline's over, it's going to be off season. But now it's you know gonna Paxson's going to have another big ass trade, a, a real big trade in the off season. I don't know if it's going to be Gordon. I don't know if it's going to be Deng. I don't know Better, if it's going to be Heinrich. He's going to have to package Gordon because he's, you know, he's well, about the only one right now that has any kind of any kind of, um, you know, any any kind of game besides maybe Heinrich. And uh, you know, last night he got tossed out of the game for saying well, something stupid. Well, yeah, I, I thought the referee had rabbit ears on that. Appreciate your call. Final beefer is our guy, the Mad Trucker. Hey, Murph, what is going on, buddy? Trucker, beef me. Hey, I'm telling you what, I'm, I'm getting sick and tired of the Cubs brass. Uh, I've already had enough shoveling this year, and I don't feel like carrying a shovel for another four months. Uh-huh. Can I cut brass? Start, you know, when the new year comes, you make a resolution. Why can't these guys give us the straight reports on injuries? What's going on with DeRosa? We've got conflicting reports again. You know, can you tell Jim Henry this isn't the NFL that we got to hide things? You know, we got, we've got uh, we been misery, miserable for 100 years. Well, you know, Trucker, honest. it is possible, and I'm not disagreeing with you, I'm, it, it is possible that they didn't uh, immediately – uh, have it diagnosed. Pro- they didn't know what was happening. You know what? I-, I don't have a problem with them not running over to the reporters right away and and uh, filling everybody in on everything. I-, I don't. I don't know why we have to learn everything the next day as fans. 
Well, but, you know, Murph, it goes back to last year, and you even said it last year, you know, how we would always get these reports, and they wouldn't always be uh, the top-notch reports. No, I don't know. You know what? I I know Mike North said that, and and some of our other hosts. I I frankly, if I did say that, you know, I I don't recall it. I won't dispute. Maybe I did, maybe I didn't. But I've never been from the uh, opinion that uh, we got to know right away what the inside story is. I don't want the enemy to always know everything about uh, the players either, though. You know, truck. Okay, Merv, I, I'll, I'll stick with you on that one, but, but uh, good to see you back. You know, I'll check in with you next week, and how about some of that trucking music? Oh, please? you know what? We'll get that up. We, we're working on a new board right here. The trucker says, where's my music? Trucking. We'll get the trucker's music up next time. Back in a flash. Hey, you know what? A quick break, and then three long segments, including Ed Farmer checking on in. On the Murph Show, Sports Radio 670, the score. Fermio in a few minutes. Three long segments soon. Thanks for participating in What's Your Beef? Join Murph for another edition of What's Your Beef? What's Your Beef has been brought to you by Brown's Chicken Sandwiches and Catering. All winners of the Mike Murphy Show are only eligible to win prizes once in a 60-day period.